because we're back in the saddle again. Yeah, we're back. We're back in the saddle and we're looking at a few different things. One is, hmm, should we take the money off the table on the Suncorp trade? We put this on Friday afternoon and we collected $135 in doing so. And that was just Friday afternoon. And it is now Monday, early afternoon. And we are 70% in the money, in the profit here. So it must be going down because a second ago it was at, I think, six and seven. Now it's at seven and eight. So let's take a look. Suncor is. Yeah, just ticked down a bit. So it went from 29.80 down to 29.68. And in doing so, is trying to cost us another dollar bill if we were to close this out. So here is our five contract puts on Suncor, and they're at $27. And again, this the stock is currently trading at this very moment for 29.68. And this was at a six and seven bid and ask a second ago. Now it's at a seven and eight. We might be able to still get the seven. So if we did seven cents, it would cost us $35 and we would still leave the table with $100 in net profit. So let's go ahead and put it on the board. And then if Suncor goes back up, then it should fill today. So let's just try that, shall we? Let's try to buy to close. It will release $13,500 in collateral. And we will keep an eye on that. So I don't imagine it's going to fill right now, but we'll keep an eye on the stock to see what it does. Speaking of keep an eye on things, let's see what the SPY is doing. Currently three. 92.15. So that trade that I was going to make, and it was when SPY was at, at about 394, I was going to do a zero day and I was going to take the 398. I was going to sell the 398 call. So that would have been sitting real pretty right now, but we did make a two days to expiration trade, didn't we? We made a two days to expiration trade that's probably showing that we're in the positive now, and it is. It's showing that we're up $40. And when we looked at it earlier, it was down 100, right? So because of the time decay and the fact that SPY is currently going down, then the value of our profit is going up as we speak. So we'll keep a close eye on this tomorrow, especially tomorrow afternoon. And even if, you know, at what, at, at any point it gets, to 50%, I would probably take that trade off because I want to have it off before the Fed makes their announcement Wednesday. I think it's like, what, 1 p.m.? 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. And what else are we going to do? So in this Google, so we put together this two option strategy with Google where we did essentially a um, strangle. Okay, so we did a strangle and the meaning of that is we are strangling the at the money at the time of this trade, okay? So we sold an $85 put, which of course right now would only cost about $2 to buy our way out of. But then we also sold a $99 call, which would cost us a bundle to get out of right now. And right now, you said right now twice in a row. I did, I really did. So at the, <laughs> we'll set it a third time, third time's a charm. Right now, we're going to just let this ride. And if this gets called away at $99, which it, at this point will, because Google's trading at 102, so be it. And the reason is this. Let's go to Google and see what our average cost is. Our average cost is 9247 So we're willing to take some profit there. And our, we'll move our position. We'll be down to 200 shares. And then we could put another $100 into the calls or the put side of the wheel for Alphabet, but we're gonna wait for it to, to, to make a bigger move south. So if the Fed does anything, I mean, if their tone is 
continues to be hawkish because I have a feeling he's going to be kind of uh, pussyfooting around on Wednesday. They're going to make a 25 basis point raise. They're going to pussyfoot around having too much of a hawkish tone because the market is currently already on edge. But if they say anything hawkish, then I believe the market will be down um, as a whole, which would probably bring Google down as well. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll let it ride as of this moment. And so here I wanted to show you this. We call this the tea bag trade. When we put, <laughs> that's rude. It's kind of disturbing too. When we put this trade on, we called it the tea bag. We went, we sold five contracts at 2050 on the call side and five contracts at $18 on the put side. So right now, the call side is breathing a uh, sigh of relief. And I think what we'll try to do, we're just going to buy these closed at this moment. We're going to buy this closed right here. And I got a move to, I think we're going to make. So we'll release. Well, we got five. Go back. Go back. Five contracts to buy back, so that'll cost us five dollars. When we put this on, we collected a hundred and five, so we'd still have a hundred dollars net profit on that. So if we review the order and put this in, it will probably fill right now. Probably fill right now, and then it'll free up those five hundred shares. Okay, so there we go. So now those five hundred shares are freed up. We'll let the eighteen dollar put ride for now. Okay, it's at 18.45, it's trading at, but we have how many shares? We have over a thousand shares, right? And it's currently in the green, hasn't been in the green much lately. So I was wondering if we can't collect a few more dollar bills on our 1,000 shares. So that gives us 10 contracts to trade on AT&T sell call. Let's look out 11 days and then do some math. So see these premiums are never very high on AT&T. Our cost basis is what? Go back to that, 18 something. Yeah, 18.25 is our average cost. So theoretically, when it comes to the wheel, anything above or even at your average cost, you're, you're typically good with, but I'd like to, keep them. If we go back here to Seeking Alpha, I want to collect another dividend before I'd have anything taken away. And the next X dividend date is going to be, let's look at dividend history just to get an idea of what, what their pattern is. So their pattern is typically going to be um, the first week or second week of April, they will have an X dividend date. Of course, we would need to be owning on the business day prior to that X dividend date. So if we look out to what, let's look at the third week of April just to see what kind of numbers we would be able to find on the calls because there's not a great deal of premium to be had, which means they don't believe it's gonna move a whole bunch. April 21st, so it's one month out at 1950, I mean, we'd be at an 84% chance of profit, a 20 delta. I would be comfortable at 1950. I really, even though AT&T made a little run a couple of months ago and closed a couple days over $20, it hasn't sniffed it since. So if you look at the difference between these two strikes, it's a huge number, right? Because this is 11 cents. And we're looking at 32 days, so right around a month. Let's just see where our numbers come in at because they're pretty conservative with AT&T. So $0.11 cents divided by 1950. So we're looking at 0 0.005. Okay, so that is in 32 days. So let's say that you can trade that 10 times in a year you'd be at 5.6%, so a very, very conservative return. However, AT&T does pay a lovely, lovely dividend. In fact, it is currently 6.12% on the dividend. And then if you add another 5.6% in, now we're over 11% on our capital. That's not too bad, is it, Bart? It's not. It's not bad at all. 
So let's try to fill 10 contracts at 11 cents per. And it's 32 days out. So that should just fill right up at 110 bucks for a thousand shares on the old covered calls. So there you have it, $110 collected. It expires in 32 days. Let's head back over to the board and see what we're dealing with. So Suncor is still pending. We still have our five puts on the board for AT&T, but we did take off the five calls and then took those shares and put them into that 10 contract trade we just made. Aflac, it, see this number has been confusing me all day because we have a 331 expiration, right? 331 expiration and it's saying we're 96% in the money already and I don't believe that. I don't believe that. It looks like our, yep, it looks like our Suncor did fill. So that means we are going to net $100 on that trade in only three days because we made it Friday afternoon and it's Monday. So let's look at Aflac. Just if we roll, if we click the roll position, what is it going to show us for? Because look at the spread between that bid and ask is crazy town. And if we click roll, it's saying one penny. I don't believe that though. I really don't. So it's a 57 put. If we rolled it out another week and stayed at 57, yeah, see, there's the, there's the problem. There is the problem. But if we rolled it to, if we rolled it to 59, would you want to do that? I don't know. No. Is that too risque? What's Aflac been doing? Let's look. When's the last time it closed in 59? Go back up here. When's the last time it closed under 59? Aflac. Let's check a look, take a look, take a look at me now. Aflac right here. Let's go to the one month. So see, it was way up here at 68, almost $69 bills. It came all the way down to 60. Ah, see, it came all the way down to 60. And now it's popped back up over 63. So 58, that could be a comfortable number. 58 should be very comfortable, really. But what is it really going to still show a penny on the debit side of this? That'd be crazy to collect another $210. We're only rolling up $1 only adding seven days, right? No, no, yeah, seven days, because it's a March 31st. So let's see if we can't roll this put, and there is our problem. Uh, what, let's see. Can we get 55 cents filled? I mean, anything filled is a good deal, don't you think? Any extra dollar bills? Even if we went to the 45, I don't even know. Is it? It's such a, the, the action on this, let's go, what's the action on this? It has zero open interest. <laughs> that's why there's like no action going on. So that's what we're looking at. I don't think we even get that filled, even if it's showing at the end or the bottom of the bid, 45 cents. It's worth a try though, isn't it? It's worth a try. So now it's asking me, what are you looking for there? Credit or a debit? We want a credit. We like credits. 250 or $225 credit, but they'd add 500 to the collateral because we're rolling, rolling, rolling. Raw hide. We're adding a hundred dollars per, and there's five contracts, so that's where the five hundred dollars in additional collateral would be. But I don't think that's going to be filled today. But we'll leave it up 
anyways, just for fun, we'll leave it on the board. Yes. Checking back here, and it's 15 minutes in already. So we're going to let it ride. That should be the last move of the day, I would imagine. All right. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you, my friend. And, you know, we're becoming best friends. Stocks, options, dividends, all the good stuff, just hanging out, chit-chatting together. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video.